These car quests that I embark on take me to the strangest and most glorious of places. Today, I'm here in Ashby Manor House in Ashby St. Ledger's, a 13th century mansion with incredible gardens to see a very exotic vehicle indeed, and also something with a very strange past. The car's not in the garden. The car's actually over here, next to an even more important building. A building that back in 1605 was the exact location where the gunpowder plot was cooked up by the owner of this place, Robert Catesby, and a bloke that you may know the name of, Guy Fawkes. It all happened up there. But below it, in there, <laughs> yeah, is a barn. And in the barn, is the car that we're going to pull out today. A Lamborghini from the 70s. So of course this is a barn find edition of the Late Break Show. I'm Johnny Smith. Right, so David, you're the person that kindly contacted me on the show to say, I have a friend, Henry, who owns this place, who has this car in his barn, has this amazing link to Guy Fawkes, Grace Jones, yeah, goodness knows what absolutely. else. So, well, thanks for getting in contact. My pleasure, my pleasure. Because, you know, it's very exciting. It doesn't happen very often. And probably the best setting of a barn find yet. Yeah, oh, it's up there. Isn't it? It's up there. Pretty stunning. Yeah. So, what, 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 how did, how, how, how has this all come apart? Part. So, so Henry bought the house from his cousin, who owns that car still. Yep. And it's really been in there. I think since, well, it has been in there since Henry bought the house. Yeah. And I've known Henry and Nova, um, you know, for I don't know, ten years. While they've been here, so I've known the car for ten years, and yeah. uh, I'm, I, I like my old cars. So, you know, have poked my head in there a number of times, suggested to Henry that we might get it out and play with it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it just felt like a great opportunity to, you know, get it out and uh, share, share the journey of getting it running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't believe that that sat in this building, the blooming gun plot, gunpowder plot room. It's all happening. It's all happening. Yeah. So, so cool. It is. It's a spectacular place to hide away yeah. a spectacular car. Yeah, it is, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Who would have thought it? An exotic car in exotic circumstances. Yes, very much so, yeah. So what's the, because I remember when you first contacted me, what's the, what's the link with Grace Jones? So Ivor, um, Grace Jones was his partner. That car was used to ferry Ivor and Grace from here up to the estate in Scotland and you know, all sorts of glamorous, glamorous parties, I'm sure. So cool. Yeah. It, I mean, she must have looked absolutely breathtaking in that car. Yeah. What so, a combination. So living here, tooling around in an Espada from here to Scotland, to London, to all, all, the, all the clubs. It's all, all good, isn't it? All the parties. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Good life. Good yeah, life. That, that living, is. Living life. Yeah. Right. I know you said that you thought the car had been recommissioned like some years ago before it got put in here. Yeah. So you were fairly confident. You said all along, I'm pretty confident that this will run. Yeah, I, mean, I think w when you see it, you, it's definitely had, I think, an engine out at some stage. Yeah. Um, and although the car has not been used for whatever it is, 18 years, something crazy, um, it's clearly been commissioned at, at some point. And yeah. Uh, yeah, my gut tells me that, yeah, it, given, given a sufficient prod, spark, fuel and ignition, I think so far, yeah, I do. The other question is, is where's this car going to go today? Regardless of whether I get it started, whether um, whatever happens to it, is it going to stay here as part of the sort of family or is it going to... The plan, as I understand it, is it's going to be sold. I think it's been in there for a long time yeah. and uh, needs to move on. So, uh, yeah, I think the plan as it stands is, is to find a new, new home for it in some form or fashion. Okay. If um, we find out exactly what's going to happen with regards to the sale of it, I will put that in the description and or we'll put it on the Late Break Show social media. So that'll be on Twitter and that'll also be on Instagram. I cannot believe that this is my second Lamborghini Espada barn find. So if you're watching this going, Johnny, you've already done a Lamborghini Espada barn find. I know, 
I did a white one and it's one of my most successful videos. So if you haven't seen that episode before, I'll put a link above my head because that was quite a special day. This car is in much more um, elaborate surroundings and I'm gonna try and piece together the backstory on this based upon what the chap that owns this place, Henry knows, uh, his, his, his cousin who he bought the house off who owned this, I'm gonna try and speak to him, and the chap that he bought it off, a bloke called Julian who says he'll be available on the phone today. But this is, from what I can see, it's a 1971 Espada. And if you're thinking, what is an Espada? I'll do a quick recap. 1968 Geneva Motor Show, the Espada was launched, uh, designed by Marcello Gandini. They made it for 10 years, 68 to 78, and they made a smidge over 1,200 cars. This was when Lamborghinis and Ferraris made, were made in really small volumes. Not today, they're mass produced today, really. Um, V12, 3.9, up front, five-speed manual. At the time, this was the fastest four-seat um, car you could buy. It is wedged right up against the wall here. But, I mean, without really touching it, what I do know is this car was on the road, I believe, in the sort of mid-2000s. And it did have quite a lot of engine work done around that time. So it was actually put in here... Um, in a relatively good state of repair. I've decided to bring two mates with me for this particular shoot. One of them is in a Lamborghini Espada pervert who's called Phil, and he should be turning up in his actual Espada. And the other guy is handy with the spanners with exotic cars. His name's Matt Walton from Jetstream Motorsport. Between the three of us, hopefully, we'll stand a chance of seeing if we can strike this up safely today. This is the bit that fascinates me because the, the interior, the interior of Espadas is something to behold. Oh wow, look how bright, look how bright that blue is, uh, the, the red is. I'm not that color blind. Yeah, there have been mice living in this, which is a real shame. Headliner looks good. Uh, everywhere else, things have been living in it. Oh, look at that wood rim steering wheel. Goodness me, that's so cool. Now I'll let Phil, the Espada pervert, do most of the historical checks on this particular example. Um, but what we do know is we're pretty sure that the, this is not the original colour paint. It's had a paint swap, a colour change at some point. The interior is the original red. Uh, but I'll let him do all of that talking because he knows way more than I do. They say this barn is a little bit damp. You can see at the top there, there's signs of condensation which is not great because it's very thick, cold walls. And um, my worry is rot on these. You can see there's bubbling along the sills here. And on the backs of the arches there. Oh man, look at those wheels. Some of the coolest looking wheels. Are they Campanolos? Yeah, they are Campanolos. They're wonderful. I can see, look, see this, there's an electric aerial here. It looks very odd in this sort of leather sleeve. I think that's either a, a later edition or a weird factory option. Oh, there's glass. The struts, the struts are tired. I don't entirely trust them. No, don't, don't trust them at all. But again, you've got the vivid red upholstery. There's mouse poo everywhere. And, um, and they've been gnawing at the edges of all the carpet. There's still a battery in it. And a spare alloy, oh yeah, the spare alloy wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. There's the knockoff. Uh, brilliant. Gonna, gonna probably need that. Oh. I mean, I don't tire of that interior, look at it. No, but the instrument panel is in really good condition. Door panels are pretty good too. I love the back seats of these. We'll pull it out into the sunshine and get a better look. But this is the bit that we all want to see, isn't it? This is the V12. The 3.9. Oh, the bonnet is really, really quite heavy on these. And you can see the design of the bonnet. It's amazing with all the, with all the drilled out sections with the knacker ducts. But look at that, that's actually surprisingly good and clean. They did say, David did say, the chap that kind of contacted the show, who's friends with Henry, he did say that he thought that the car had been mechanically overhauled not long before it was laid up here. 
and it looks like it. Aluminium radiator has been added. There's no sort of furring up of the aluminium on any of the inlet manifolds or the car bodies, which means this can't have been that damp, which is good. Okay, so only one of the tires is soft, so we don't need to pump all the tires up. We're gonna put some air into this one and then we'll know whether the car can freely roll. If the brakes are unseized, brilliant, saves us hours of time and we can get it out and play with it out there in the, in the open and have a better look at it. Um, we strictly speak, we don't need to move the Massey Ferguson, but there's any excuse to get a tractor started up, we might as well do it. So let's, let's move the Massey for the hell of it. Don't tell my foot pump. But I can't be bothered to go to the car and get it, not when there's this in a shed over there. Right, tyres up. Handbrake was left off, thankfully. And it's free. So this is Henry's phone. Henry's the guy that owns this house now, but the guy that owned it before is his cousin, Ivor Guest. And I'm actually gonna phone Ivor now to get a bit more information about, well, about the house, but also about the car. Hi, Ivor. My name's Johnny Smith from The Late Break Show. How are you doing? Hi, Jeff. Hi, good, thank you. And thank you for doing this, it's really great. That's all right, it's an absolute pleasure. I wanted to ask you, really, firstly, about when you got the Espada? Well, it was around, I was wondering that. I was just speaking to the previous owner, Julian, who you can speak to later, who will probably be more helpful around the car than me. I bought it around 20 years ago, I reckon. He's a friend of mine, and I'd, I'd seen it three or four years before that. He turned up somewhere in it. You know, I'm not really a, much of a petrol head guy, but I, you know, I mean, I used to live at the house you're in now. I, I love and have an eye for beautiful things. And I, I just never seen a car as beautiful as that. So that piqued my interest. And I, I remember chatting to him and saying, if you ever sell that thing. <laughs> Let me know. Sell that thing. Let me know. And that's exactly what happened about three years later. I have a place in Scotland and I used to use it a lot to drive up and down to Scotland. I, I used it to drive from London to there, but of course, you know, when I left there, I didn't really have anywhere to keep it, you know, unless you're, unless you've got some engineering skills or, you know, that type of thing. It's a bit of a mud's game. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, and it's quite, it's quite a rare, rare beast as well. So not a lot of people have ever worked or seen in this barter. So it's... And I remember saying to, actually, it was Chris Blackwell from um, Island Records. I remember driving it to his house one time in Reading. And he came out and he was like, wow, look at that thing. What's it like driving that? And I said, well, you can take it for a spin if you want. But I said, it's literally like driving for the first time. It's so much fun to drive it. <laughs> uh, but it, does, it, it doesn't have power steering and stuff. So, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a beast to drive around London. But I used to. Yeah, yeah, it's physical. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is physical. Yeah, but it's great. Have you got, what, what was your best, what was your best kind of 
um, road, road trip or drive memory in it? Or did you ever give any anybody interesting a lift in it? Well, you've probably heard about all of that, right, already. <laughs> I mean, I remember Grace Jones and I used to drive in it often. And I remember people being quite bewildered. I remember, yeah, driving to a driving to a concert in somewhere like Leicester that Grace and I went to see. And on the way back, we pulled into Watford Gap. We were going back to London. We pulled into Watford Gap and we were filling it up. And she was standing by the car and I remember somebody coming up to her and going, Grace Jones and Watford Gap. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. And but also other, in that... I know, right. They and were Grace, so bewildered. And, I'm, and I was like, yeah, well, we, you know, she's, she's got to fill up with petrol too, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks ever so much for your time, Ivor. Really, really appreciate it. All Take right. care. Bye. Bye. What we're doing is we've put a jump pack on it. We've removed the, the, the fuel pipe that goes into these six carbs, these six Webbers. Matt's holding it. We're gonna, <laughs> yeah, to his face. And we're gonna turn the ignition on one click. And if the electric fuel pump works, it might start trying to prime. We don't know the condition of the fuel tank or the fuel lines. We've got to, hold on one second, let me get a jug. Yeah, but irrespective of that, I'm gonna go for Tony BMW's can of hope, which you will have seen from previous um, late break show barn finds. If you see this T piece here, I'm going to connect, or I have done, the new fuel line from the can of hope. Use the electric fuel pump from that to feed both this bank of Webers and that. You see, there's a cross pipe. My only worry is you can see how perish these fuel pipes are that connect here. Now, I have brought some spare fuel pipe that I think is the right diameter, so we might be able to do this. So, That's a bit safer. That is safer. I like that. <laughs> hey Matt, I reckon that this car was heavily recommissioned or serviced before being parked in there. Yeah, not long before. There is a lot of residue and bits in there, but it's not. It's definitely had a recommissioning at some point in, yeah. in its last couple of years, I'd have thought. You've just checked the water and yeah, it's, it's full to the brim to and the it top. looks mint. It looks, yeah, it looks and really the, have you clean. And have you seen the oil? Yeah, the oil's like it, clean honey. It's yeah, amazing. It's and then if you take, someone's had the air, the air filter covers off, the, yeah, the mice have clean, gnawed yeah. on, on the gasket, but look at the condition of the air filter. It, it's like it's only just been put in there. So it's, yeah, it's had it. a lot of work done at some point. That's just the overflow. It's got a dribble in it. Yeah. So I'm thinking if we can get the fuel to not piss everywhere, we, or if my pipe is the right size pipe, we, we can hopefully. Is the ignition light? No, we've got no ignition lights at the moment. What is that electric window? Look, the electric window works. That is nice. So that works. That sounds really smooth. We don't have indicators. Right. Or any dash lights. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. So I found this. That's a fuse. Yeah, but it's in a bulb holder. And this was hang <laughs> this was hanging, just not connected to anything. But that should be connected to that. Yeah, well, that is that is a fuse end. So where the hell does it is it supposed to live? So under this cover, which sits on the inner wing here, these are all the fuses and all the relays. But it's that because that was just hanging in there, it wasn't attached to anything. It's pre-bent, so we're trying to work out where it should have gone from and to. But there's three, maybe four options. I don't really want to chance it. So let's go and get, oh, I know, a spare espada. It's not often you get to see not, not one, but two espadas, one currently running, one not. So but just between two cars, we've got, we've got 12 Weber carbs and 24 cylinders. That's not bad, is it? But what we're doing is it's great as a reference because we can't quite work out at the moment uh, we, we don't have any dash lights. So we're just checking the wiring of this and comparing notes with that one to see if there's a missing bit. It's the easiest, quickest way we can do it. Is there a sign of rodent activity in and around the wiring? Not in this particular area where, in the wiring, no. There is on the carpets around, but not actually on this wiring. That's kind of good. Yeah. Whoa, you... There we go. Oh, there we go. 
That made me jump out of my bloody skin. <laughs> that cooling fan there. I thought it was going to Sorry, clear prop. Right. So we've got power now. Dash lights are working. Fuel pump is, is making a sound from the back, but the fuel tank's dry. We don't really want to risk it yet. So we're going to use the can of hope. This has got fresh E5 in it and we'll run it from this and we'll see if we can get it to fire up. If it's raining fuel from those perish fuel uh, rails, we will try and replace those uh, or we'll just steal a load of bits off Phil's car. I mean, he, a good can, option. He, he can hear me. Everyone ready? Yeah. Needle just flicking, okay. didn't it, or not? Right. Well, we weren't expecting it to fire up because we hadn't introduced any fuel, but that sounded just fine. It did, but there's no oil pressure on the gauge yet. But the light did go out, I think, didn't it? Yeah, the oil pressure light's not on. Oil pressure but light's on. The gauge is out. not working. Try it. Yeah, put that ready. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they're pissing. They're, they're leaking out everywhere. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Well, like really badly. Oh yeah. Oh shit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me put a finger over that one. Yeah, it's coming. Let me put a Jubilee clip on that one. Hold on. There you go. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Let's try and turn it. I don't want to like this. This does. Let me just do a couple of pumps on the throttle. Yes. I mean, what, okay. a, what a linkage. Just give it another pump, quick. Turn it on again. Keep going. Turn the fuel off. Oh, nearly. It's just flooding it a little bit, I think. Yeah. Well, that was really cool, wasn't it? Yeah. It really smooth. It tried to stumble into life. It very nearly fired. It did. But because we're running on, you know, a the non-standard fuel pump, we're trying to kind of balance between flooding it. Yeah, which we have. And starving it, and we have flooded it. But it's because these pipes also are just throwing yeah. fuel. There's a leak yeah, on this. leaking everywhere. This hard line, this union yeah. to this carb is, is actually split. And this one's just weeping badly. But it sounds really good. Phil really just positive. went, that actually sounds pretty good. Pretty smooth, pretty happy. And the good news is, you can see from there, it was last taxed in 08, so theoretically it was last driven in 08. So it's not like this is a barn farm where it's been left for 30 years or something. But, but then again, it's Italian and possibly temperamental. If it's going to be any, it's going to be this one or one of them. I didn't look at any of those, did we? But oh, is it those plugs come out? Phil's got Phil's a special got a spanner, special spanner. Yeah. Phil's magic spanner. Philip. Plug, plug okay. spanner, please. Yeah, sun's out, plug's out. I think we'll go with this one. So what we're, what we're going to do now, uh, viewers, is we're going to take the plugs out. Just check we haven't flooded it at the plug end. The plugs are, should we just say, a, in a bastard of a position. Not with that tool, they're not. No, but luckily Phil has a special tool which was prepared by someone's angle grinder. A shoulderless, what did you call it? It's a shoulderless slap on swivel socket. Shoulder slap on swivel socket. <laughs> and, it, and it means that you can actually get the plugs out. And uh, sun's out, so plugs out, as nobody says. Yeah. 
into that. Purrs like a kitten. So, so quiet and happy. Like a sweet little Italian kitten. That is amazing. Sweet is it? Really, really nice. Wow. Wasn't expecting it to be quite this placid. We did have a few pops and bangs underneath the uh, gunpowder plot room. Hi, Julian. Hi there. Thanks for sparing some time to chat um, Lamborghinis. That's all right. My pleasure. Where did you buy it and when did you buy it? When did your kind of uh, life with it start? Uh, I, did, uh, I, I bought it through Colin Clark. Yep. And at the time I saw a picture in Classic Car Magazine of two Espadas up on a ramp in, in a single garage, you know, a working garage. Yeah. So I, so I followed that up and met Colin Clark and said, I'm interested in, a, in getting one. Yeah. And um, I don't know how much detail you want to sort of know. He rang he me one day and said, if you want to see a really, you know, a fantastic car, come to the garage and you can see it. And it wasn't for sale. Wasn't so it? I and, no, it wasn't for sale. It was just because he at the time was servicing all the Lamborghinis for this guy who owned them. And I was just standing looking at it and just thinking, oh my God, you know what I mean? I was absolutely blown away. <laughs> and then I was standing it and he said, and, and uh, Colin suddenly said, Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, I don't know if it's going to start, but let's see if we can start it. And he sat inside, and I don't know whether you know these things, but you, when you turn it on, you turn on the fuel pump, first of all, and you just hear this, tick, 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 this That's mad right. kind of clicking. That's right. About, and you let that click for about sort of 20 seconds. Yeah. And then you, and then you hit the, then you hit the ignition at another turn. Yeah. And when it, st and when it started, I literally put my hand over my mouth because I was just <laughs> grinning like a complete idiot. <laughs> and I just literally, and I remember just thinking, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy it. And, that, you know, and the, were, you, uh, were you into cars prior to this or was this just a thing that you I, saw and it just... No, kind of... I, I've all, I'd always really liked cars and driving, and enjoy driving. And then I just thought, you know what, I think I'm going to get a car, I'm going to get a nice car. And... So, uh, yeah, so I'd remortgage my flat at the time to do a whole roof conversion. And in fact, I didn't do that. I, uh, I bought the Lamborghini. Did you, instead of your yeah. new flat conversion? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remortgaged the flat to do a roof conversion and I bought the car. Bloody hell. What year was this? Got no idea. You're talking ni 90s? Yeah, in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know the guy who owned it from me, Roy Jackson Moore? I, well, I didn't know until the chap that I've got with me here, Phil, who is like a bit of an Espada buff, he said, I'm yeah. pretty sure that car was owned from you by... Yeah, it was. Was it, what's I his mean, surname again? Unbelievable Roy... history with that car. Yeah. I mean, Roy Jackson Moore was involved in the land speed records with Thingy Healy, as in Jensen Healy. Yeah. And Austin Healy. The yeah. Healy... Roy Jackson Moore was involved with him in doing the land speed records in America in like the 50s and wow. 60s. And Roy Jackson Moore is a total, total dude. When I had it, I had all the paperwork, including a letter from Ferruccio Lamborghini saying how honoured he was that Roy Jackson Moore had bought one of his cars and how proud he was that he had. Really? And so that's in, the gear, that's in the paperwork, yeah. Bloody hell, it's that unbelievable. That it's is full of, and it's got all the original bill of sale and everything. Goodness me, that is cool because it's got um. It's totally, and it's on Ferruccio Lamborghini from Santa Agata. You know what I mean? And the letter is so sweet. It's just amazing, and it's signed Ferruccio Lamborghini. Goodness me, Julie! It sounds like you need to buy this bloody car back. Well, I'm I'm thinking of it. That's what I'm thinking of doing. It's it's a beast, and uh, it's really hard work to drive. But when you get that car out on the open road and you're driving it, it is a spaceship. I mean, it is so fast and so smooth. It's just I mean, it's like nothing I've ever driven. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm not. I'm not making. You know, I absolutely that car is. It used to make, I used to get in it 
and get it get it out of its garage, drive it onto the A3, and it used to make me literally sort of scream in the car <laughs> after I'd had it for six years. Because it's just like, you just go, oh my God, you know, driving down the road, just think, this is a joke. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm legally allowed to drive this car down the A3, you know. Yeah. It's just insane. All right, Julian, I'll let you crack on with the day, but thanks ever so much. Yeah, fantastic, thanks. Bye. All right, bye. Um, so bravely or foolishly, depending on how you look at it, um, we've decided, we think we've freed off the clutch. We've got a bit of space in front of the stately home and we think we're going to take it for a quick drive. I will be in the passenger seat with the can of hope and the battery. So I'll be the fuel system. <laughs> Safety first. David will, <laughs> David will be driving it with the centre console hinged out the way. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I'm just... Did you say safety doesn't take a day off? <laughs> Go around the Bentley. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go on the grass. <laughs> That's it. It works. That's it. That's first. <laughs> Oh, we're going back down here now, we know. So we decided to bring another Espada to the Espada barn farm, but a fully functional one owned by Phil here. You've had your Espada, Phil, for ages. Yeah, 21 years. And, and, I, and, I, and I thought I'd give Phil a call when I heard about this to see if I could get some more intel on the backstory of this. You dug up some info on it, didn't you? Yeah, so I took the number plate into the Lamborghini registry and found out it was chassis 8035. Um, had a couple of little interesting tidbits that it had changed colour. Um, it was Azuro okay. Mexico was its original colour. The, the interior is still the same colour. Um, it had an engine swap early in its life at the factory. And it was also I found out that the, oh, it had been in a car magazine. And uh, it, it was rumoured it said it was in a group test with an ISO Lely, a Ferrari 365, um, a Maserati Indy. Um, so quite an interesting group piece. And the Espada came out on top. Did it? When was this, in the 80s? Yeah, or? 87 as it turned out. Right, okay. And, um, and they said some lovely things about it, about the, the knock-off wheels, the way they sort of twinkle in the sunlight. It looks very much like a Captain Scarlet kind of car, which, you know, yeah. my, I saw one when I was a child and it was very much that sci-fi Ed Straker UFO kind of vehicle. It does. Well, that's yeah. the thing. I suppose the biggest difference immediately you can see between yours and this is the wheels, aren't they? Yeah. A lot of people like the, the Mura wheels, the, the sort of centre knockoffs. offs yeah. um, my, my particular thing is about the front. I favour the frown over the, the yeah. googly eyes of the earlier <laughs> yeah. models. So the eyes protrude a bit. The grill's yeah. different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. the yeah, grill's the different. different. The interior's the biggest difference. A lot of people rate the Series 2 as the best of the interiors. The dash binnacle, because you've got the one that's angled to the driver, haven't you? The bit yeah, of the, yeah. yeah. And, the, and everything in the Series 2 has got the wood finish on it. I think it's actually mechanically pretty good. I think it's sweeter than that. Yeah. I've got a little bit of engine envy. Have you? Because I've used mine a lot. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on the runway towards a rebuild at some point, but this one is sweet as. You could tell when it was turning over, you could tell the way it broke into life, how quickly the oil pressure light went out. Um, and also, as you discovered to clean oil, it was, it was freshly serviced before it went in the barn. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's lovely. It's days like this that I really am so thankful for the job that I do. I absolutely love it. I can't believe that I found a Lamborghini, which is a connection with a famous racing driver, Grace Jones and Guy Fawkes. <laughs> and we got it going and we drove it around the grounds of this amazing place here, Ashby Manor House. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, why not subscribe? If you want to become a Patreon, you can see videos like this earlier, than most and maybe you've got an interesting car 
doesn't have to be as exotic as this, but with a backstory, maybe it's, it's got a lovely survivor nature to it. Get in contact with us. In the description, there is an email address. It could be in a real barn. It could be in a lean-to. It could be in a hedge or a field. Anywhere. You name it. Thanks for watching.